Welcome to the tutorial symbols. In this tutorial you're going to learn all about how to create, edit, and share symbols as well as all about its structure and hierarchy. So to begin let's look at the various ways of how to create a symbol. You can create a symbol from a drawing either by selecting the entire drawing or by selecting a part of the drawing. You can even use the cutter tool To make a random selection and also use that um, as your selection for the symbol. So you can create a symbol in two or three different ways. You can click on the button here at the top to create a symbol. You can go to the edit menu and say create symbol or you could use the keyboard shortcut F8 and that's applicable for both Windows and Mac. So a dialog box will come up to allow you to rename your symbol or select from a drop down if there are other layers that exist um, to put the symbol on. So I'm going to rename mine Karate Rabbit Head. And then you have the option of cutting from the source. So if you want to put this in a symbol and then have this as sort of a headless rabbit, then you would select cut artwork from source. If you want to create this symbol but then leave the rest of the rabbit intact, then you would not check this. So I'm going to leave the rabbit like this and say OK. And as you can see, the symbol appeared in the timeline. So if I unselect this, we just have the rabbit's body. And if I reselect it and unselect this, you see we have the rabbit in full. So another way to create a symbol is from the timeline. And I think I'm actually going to delete this here. So you can create a symbol from the timeline in several different ways. I'm just going to do something first. There you go. So you can either choose the layer from the left side of the timeline and then use any of the three options I showed you, so the button, edit, uh, create symbol, or F8. Or you can choose the cells so you can select, shift, select all of the cells from, or part of the cells actually, from the right side of the timeline and use the button or the menu options or the keyboard shortcut F8. Or you can use either the cells or the layer from the left side of the timeline and drag them directly into the symbol library. So you can see that it's been created here. Another way that you can create a symbol is from the network view. So let's go there. So in this case, we only have one module because we only have one layer, and that is the rabbit color layer. So we can do exactly what we did before. We can use the, the Create Symbol button. We can use the Edit menu, Create Symbol, or use F8. But another thing that we can do after selecting the module in the network view is to use the keyboard shortcut Copy. So that's Command-C for Mac or Control-C for Windows. And then click somewhere in the Symbol library, and then use Command or Control-V to paste it. So in this case it gave it a bracket 2 because I've done it twice. But that's another way. And you might notice that both for the timeline and for the network view um, the symbols are created in the library but they do not appear in the timeline or in the network. Um, it's harder to tell in the network but in the timeline you know that if you drop a symbol um, into the camera view, you can see a visual difference because it has this film strip representing its different cells, whereas in a regular template or regular drawing, they look something like this, just grain flat. Um, and also, if you noticed, when you select something from your template library, whether it's a symbol or a template, if you drop it in the camera view, it's going to drop exactly where your mouse drops it. Whereas if you would like it in the position that it was originally created, you really do have to drop it in the left side of the camera view. And then you see you can't tell the difference because they're both in their original positions. Like that. So that's just a good thing to keep in mind that if you create a symbol from the camera view that it'll appear right away in the timeline but when you create it in the network view or the timeline you have to actually drag it from the library to either of those two places and that if you drag it into the network view or to the left side of the timeline view the symbol will be in their original positions. So the next thing I want to show you how to create is an empty symbol and you can do this in two ways. You can either click somewhere on the right side um, of the symbol library in the library view and select new symbol. And as you can see there's nothing here because it's a blank 
symbol and as you can see because of the crosshairs and because we see the symbol's name and because we see that there's a hierarchy so there's a you have the ability to go back to the main scene that you are in fact in the symbol and so the symbol is now ready to be edited so to speak so say I do something uh, like you know like like this so that's my new symbol and I can go back and I can always drag it in if I if I need to like that. Um, the second way of creating an empty symbol is to go to the insert menu at the top and to say create empty symbol in library. And if you do this once again you have the opportunity to create an empty symbol uh, that's ready for you to go so you know sometimes you don't necessarily um, have artwork that you want to create into a symbol but you want to do it the other way around you want a blank symbol and to create directly from. So once again you have that opportunity. Um, and I'm going to just delete these two from the library, which is the next thing I wanted to show you. So deleting is as easy as right-clicking and selecting the delete menu item. And you always get a dialog box that's telling you that once you delete this, it's basically permanent. Um, while you still have your scene open, you can always use the undo button. So I'm going to say yes. Uh, so it's gone. But then I can also use control Z to undo and it's come back. But the moment that I close my scene, so if I delete this again, I say yes, and then say I actually, you know, save and close my scene, then it's really deleted from my hard drive. It doesn't exist anywhere as a file. Um, the other way of deleting is just to select and to use the delete key. So the next thing I'd like to show you how to do is how to edit a symbol. So you can edit a symbol in two ways. You can either right click on the symbol in the library and select edit symbol and it'll take you into the symbol and once again you have your indicators there, the crosshairs, the fact that you can see the symbol name and the icon at the top here. Or you could double click in the symbols row of cells um, anywhere in the timeline. So like that. Um, I think I may have mentioned this before but symbols are linked to the original artwork so if you're editing your symbol like you are doing here you're actually modifying what exists in the library view and also if you drop the symbol several times throughout your project you're modifying each and every one of those versions of the symbol. If you want to edit a symbol without affecting all the other symbols um, that exist in your project you have to duplicate it. And I'll show you that in a bit. But first I want to show you how to make nested symbols. So first I'm just going to hide this and I'm going to do this very crudely. So let me zoom in a bit. Then I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut F8. So the name of the new symbol is going to be Karate Rabbit 01 leg and I am going to cut the artwork from source and I'll say OK. So the leg is right there. Um, and we're going to enter the symbol, so let's uh, edit symbol. And then from this leg, what I could do, normally you'd clean this up and whatever, I can then cut from the knee and do the same thing. And this time I'm going to call this, call the tibby again. I'm going to cut it from the source again and say OK. And then from the tibia, we're going to cut off the foot. And cut from source, and let's call this Cardi Rabbit. So then if we go back to the top and let's enter the, actually let's enter the leg symbol again. So let's edit symbol. So from here I should have, yeah, the tibia and from the tibia I should have the foot. So I don't know if you see how that goes um, and then from the foot it's by itself. So you can see the hierarchy here in this nested symbol. You have the foot, you can go back up to the tibia, 
and in the tibia symbol you have the foot symbol but you have the tibia drawing and then if you go into the leg you have the um, tibia symbol but the leg drawing and in that tibia symbol you have the foot symbol and then you can go back to the top so you have that whole series of nested symbols and that's one method of animating but we don't really recommend it I'm going to refer you to pack 9 if you want to see our recommended method. However, a good use for the nested symbols is a skateboard from the animate sample material because the four wheels are just the same animated symbol repeated and grouped. So this leads me into my next topic of duplicating a symbol. I'm just going to extend this exposure. So if you remember what I was saying before, if you want to edit a symbol but not have every other symbol linked to the same drawing be modified as well, you have to duplicate that symbol. And the way that you do this is you choose one of the cells of the symbol that you would like to duplicate in the timeline, and then you go to the top menu and select Edit, Duplicate Selected Symbol. Uh, so here in the library you'll see that um, for some reason they renamed it Karate Rabbit 01 Tibia, but it's actually Karate Rabbit 01 Leg. Um, you can see because they look identical, and this one has the number 2 beside it. It didn't give me the chance to rename it, so I'm just going to rename it quickly. So as not to get confused. So these two are identical, and what you can do now is modify this symbol without changing this symbol and everything that's linked to it. The only thing that you have to know though is even though this has been duplicated, all its subsequent inner layers have not. So this tibia has not been duplicated. This foot inside the tibia has also not been duplicated. And so if you modify any of these two symbols, the foot or the tibia, which is inside the leg, even though it's the O2 leg um, or the second leg in brackets, they're still going to be modified throughout all the other symbol drawings. So once again, you'd have to keep performing that action to ensure, like the duplication action, to ensure that um, you wouldn't be modifying the original source artwork. And once again, you can see just like when two drawings um, are separated in the timeline, you can see that there's actually a cut here in the cell symbols that you know that this is a different uh, symbol even though it's in the same row in the timeline. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was sharing symbols. So like I mentioned in one of the previous tutorials, your symbol library is unique to your scene. So if you open up another scene, even though it's still on your computer, um, none of the files from the symbol library would appear in that new scene. However, all your templates would appear um, because they're saved somewhere on your hard drive and they aren't uh, local to your scene. So I think maybe you see where I'm going with this. What we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop a symbol into our scene. So let's say the rabbit color, say the rabbit master. something like this. So right now this is a symbol and we want to make this into a template so that we can share it with other animators or whoever. Um, what we can do then is take it from our symbol library, drag and drop it into the left side of the timeline, um, and then take this entire um, layer and drag and drop it into a library that we know um, creates templates. So I'm going to put it into maybe my library. If you put it into a library like this, you have to remember to write to modify. Um, maybe I'll put it in my characters folder. And now I have a Karate Rabbit Master template again that exists um, as not being a symbol. And so if I delete this, and drag and drop this in the left side. So as I may have mentioned before, templates or .tpl files are like little scenes. So the trick to sharing a symbol is to create one of these mini scenes and to expose a symbol in its timeline. 
So that's it for the tutorial symbols. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, templates.